how do I set up a Minecraft server that is going to allow both VR players on the Vive or the Rift and 2D players just on normal PC clients uh, using the Java version to, to connect to a server that I'm running. Well, I searched around for quite a bit and I couldn't figure that out. So I thought I'd share my tips with you guys so that you can uh, not go through the same headaches I did. It is definitely possible now, whereas um, some months ago, this combination of, th of steps just wasn't viable. Uh, the software wasn't there. Uh, there were incompatibilities with different versions. I certainly have tried the Windows 10 version. Stay away from that. It's just not very good. Um, so I'm going to walk you through the Java setup and we're going to go from there. So again, you can buy for about 20 quid, I think you can buy a license to Minecraft. That's all you're going to need uh, to run a server. I don't think you need actually a license to the game, but to connect to it, you most certainly will. So um, first step is step one, download the files you're going to need. So client and server jars are things that you're going to need. They're like basically zip files. So you go ahead and download those. Um, you're going to need to unpackaged those. I unpackaged them into like C slash users and then placed those in the C users username jar file there, run the server, right? Started off a couple of files kind of unpackage. There's an EULA or EULA uh, licensing agreement that needs to be updated from false to true. So once you've updated the parameters in that from false to true, you can move on. Then you run the server and you can configure server properties with a, with a, with a program like Notepad++. Recommend that as well. So to, you configure your server properties, set up things like the number of players and um, the name of the server and your IP address. The IP address is very important because that's how packets are going to get, actually data is going to get to the server. So find out your IP address. You can use whatismyipaddress.com or a similar facility. And then you need to go into, log into your router uh, your internet router or broad broadband router and port forward both the UDP and TCP ports um, to 25565. Okay, so you find out uh, first you go to IP config, so you run command in Windows, go to IP config, find your IPv4 address. Once that's done, you've got the kind of internal address, then you go back to your router and you say, I want to please forward my ports these ports 25565 from start to finish, right? I want to forward the any any traffic that, that comes on those ports to and you give the IPv4 address of your server. Okay. So now you can go back, configure your, your server properties, name and run your server, checking the internet connection to make sure it can actually uh, be seen. Now, second step, go back, uh, you've got your client jar ready to go. So unpackage that. Uh, you want to download and install Vivecraft if you are a VR user. I recommend personally the non-Forge version. It just worked first time for me. Uh, whereas I had some issues with the Forge edition. And then you see if you, if you can connect to it, you would normally connect either via a local IP address, in other words, the one you just configured your server on, um, or an external address. So again, you want to configure the server, the server's IP address to actually be a public facing IP and then that server is being delivered information from the port forwarding we set up earlier. Okay, so those steps. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Okay, so we go from there. Then you want to return to your server and set up your operators, right? Your mods, essentially. So that's forward slash op space name, whatever the name of the Minecraft account for your ops is going to be. You can consider and download textures and or shaders to make your game look particularly good. And then there's an optional install on Vivecraft to install for hand movements. But essentially those are, the, those are the six steps for the server, seven steps for the client that you'll need to go through in order to get running. Once you're up and running, the game can look very good. Um, Vivecraft works very well. It's got, at, at, as at this moment, it has very good kind of hand controls, the ability to uh, walk around. I actually use a mode where you disable auto jump and you physically jump in the room to get up and down blocks. Very good exercise and a bit of fun, to be honest. Um, so that's that's really it for the server setup. I think you'll find that it is really that that straightforward. But long, long story short, don't bother with Windows 10. Uh, please download the client server jars, use Vivecraft, and remember that 
Uh, remember the connection between public IP addresses and the port forwarding on your network. I'll explain that just once one more time before we, we wrap up here. So your public IP address, in other words, what appears if you go to whatismyipaddress.com, that's like, you know, your like an apartment complex. So you're saying my car apartment complex is on 7 Main Street. Okay? So the parcel has gotten to the apartment building at that point. Now, from that point, they need to know what apartment is it actually going to? Is it 6, apartment 6, apartment 65, apartment 82? We don't know. So that's where you go to uh, command prompt and you go IP config and you look at your IPv4 address and you say, okay, well, where do I want that package to actually go? And so say it's 192.168.0.5, then you want to basically route those packages to the front door of apartment five. And so that analogy tells us how we get from a public facing IP address through port forwarding to the front door so your server can receive the data packets it needs to basically host the game. So provided you've, uh, step one, gotten your correct external IP address and configured your server for that. And what that means is in the server properties file, IP equals your public IP address. Then step two, um, you have your, you have your uh, router forwarding, port forwarding, and the port forwarding, again, brings those data packets to the server, and then provided the server is running and can see the internet, your client should be able to connect to it and you can breathe a sigh of relief. End to end, the whole setup time took me about two hours to do, so allocate yourself about that amount of time if you're gonna do this, and hopefully I've saved you a bit of frustration, at least telling you that this is a connection to things that works at this point, as of November 2017. All right, if you liked the video, let me know. Um, otherwise, see you guys over on Twitch. Cheers, bye. Run, human.